Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms, my name's Stuart, and today's video is another painting tutorial for Warlord Games Pike and Shot Epic Battles. Today's subject is the artillery that we find on the Cavalry Sprue. The Warlord Games very kindly sent me to review a few weeks ago. Now you may well have your hands on these because they are free with War Games Illustrated this month at time of recording where you either have a cavalry frame or an infantry frame and I suppose quite a few people will have popped into WH Smiths or elsewhere in the UK and, and picked up multiple copies to get their hands on these. So the two different guns are a Saker medium gun and a light falconet. Now, as so often with me, these miniatures have been primed using a Zenithal pre-highlight. That's a black prime first, and then using an airbrush, mostly top down, but a little bit in from the sides as well, a white um, lighter shade, and then a dry brush of white on top after that. I'll include a link in the video now if you want to go and see a slightly longer video that describes that, how I do that and, and the benefits for it. But all you really need to know is that I'll be base coating these miniatures using Citadel Contrast, um, Army Painter Speed Paints and Vallejo Express Colour. And they are essentially glazes and they go really well over uh, the pre-highlighted method I have chosen. I'd just like to thank Miller from Miller's Miniatures for the advice and help when it came to the colour schemes and the uniforms for these pieces and it's also worth checking out the Keep Your Powder Dry blog as well. Um, there's an excellent article on uh, painting artillery along with painting other things as well. So really, really useful. But essentially what I found out is, is what I expected from the little bit of research I did to myself is that the artillery crews are mainly in civilian clothing. So you've got a little bit of flexibility about what colours you, you paint them. And in terms of the carriages themselves, there were a number of different colours um, that they could have been. Um, so I've picked some, some different examples today. Obviously, you don't need to pick the exact same colours that I have in this video. So first up, we're using a contrast Blood Angels Red, and I'm going to use this to paint the, the carriage part of the larger Saker gun. So I'm taking my time to try and only get the red where I want it. I can touch up with a white or a grey paint afterwards if I do. So it's not a major issue, but I'm trying to be as neat as I can. And the reason for that is that all the effort you put into the pre-highlight really shows its benefits when you're applying these thin glazed paints. You get that natural highlight and shadow from the method you're using. And if you go over it too much with different colours, when you paint over it afterwards with another one, you lose that effect. For the smaller falconet, I'm using Contrast Gore Grunt of Fur for the base of the wood. Again, as I mentioned right at the top, there's lots of different colours you could choose from. I've seen examples of greens and, and sort of grey blues, even some yellows and things. I just wanted to provide two different examples over the two guns. Now I'm going to use Contrast Fire Slayer Flesh as the base for the flesh on all of the crew. So I'm just going around picking out their hands and faces. I tend to like to do this first on miniatures of this size. If there is a little bit of overspill, it tends to be hidden quite nicely by the hair and the and the other colours and things. Is I find it easier to touch up around them rather than to finish painting the other areas and go back in and try to be super neat with the flesh. Now onto the hair. I use three colours. So there's contrast wildwood, and there's gore grunt of fur. And there's also Nasdrag Yellow. And what I tend to do with these, the same as I do with my infantry strips, if you watched previous tutorials, is open all three pots up and have some have my brush with some clean water ready to, to wash in between and just sort of pick the miniatures up and go along a line and change the colours each miniature. So you've got a nice variation of hair colour across your units. Mm -hmm. 
Now we start their clothes, and as I said, you can be pretty random here. There's civilian clothes, so I'm using Arsamar and Blue there for the trousers on this chap here, and I'll probably pick out some different colours on different miniatures. Now the first of the Vallejo Express colours, I'm using Snake Green. Again, you don't need to copy the exact placing of any of these colours or even the exact shades. Go and pick some colours that you think would match the civilian clothing. I mean, I've gone quite bright on a couple of my choices here, but at this scale I quite like them to stand out. Place them where you like, and this video should really just give you an idea of the kind of techniques that you can use. So this is Express Colour Copper Brown. Now, I find these colours really, really good. I still mean to do a bit of a review of these at some point, but they are definitely nice additions and alternatives to Army Painter Speed Paints and Citadel Contrast. The only thing I'd say is you need some agitators in and they do take a bit of a shake, but they're very, very nice and they dry very matte. So another express colour, this is Omega Blue, and decided to go for this chap's hat. And then the waistcoat on the chap here. Now onto one of my favourite colours, it's Contrast Garrick Sewer, and I'm using this for some leatherish coloured waistcoats. Uh, it's a very, very good colour for sort of all round leathers and browns. And the same colour here for the trousers on this chap. Now for some contrast skeleton horde. So I wanted two kinds of whites or creams on their, on their um, clothing. Now for contrast skeleton horde, I wanted to do two kinds of off whites or creams, one sort of gray based and one a little bit warmer. And the skeleton horde is perfect for that kind of warmer, more sepia color. Again, spreading this around, using it in multiple places, so some have that colour on their shirts or their hats, some on their socks. Now on to Express Colour Templar White, and this is a nice, subtle grey-white. As you can see, I continue to just spread these colours out randomly around the different crewmen. So we get a nice mix of different kinds of whites and shades throughout. Now for some Angaras Dunes, which is slightly stronger in pigment than the Skeleton Horde, a little bit more yellow. I'm just using it for these little bags they have and the straps that are holding them. I'm using some contrast wild wood. I'm going to use this for the wooden parts of the sponges, etc. We've got a lot of different browns going on here, so I wanted to use a different one and a slightly darker one to make it stand out. Let's use the same colour to pick out the uh, bucket of this crewman here. Now for some contrast black Templar. Now this is the lighter and bluer of the two blacks that uh, Citadel will do. I'm just using that for the top of the sponges because it gives that nice natural highlight. Whereas Black Legion, the thicker one, which we'll use a little bit later, would be very dark, almost like a paint, and it wouldn't show the detail off quite the same. And now on to said Black Legion. Now this is the slightly darker, warmer black of the two. And I'm going to be painting in all of their shoes. And I'm also going to be covering the pudding base parts of all of these miniatures as well. So that when I place them on the bases later on and I want to add texture or another colour, it won't have any white showing through in an awkward place that's hard to get to.
You'll notice I'm also using the same color to paint in all of the metal areas on the guns as well. So being that the barrel or even the metal plates and strips and things around the side. I'm essentially covering any of the boots, the pudding bases and any of the future metallic areas in this nice dark black. It takes a very subtle dry brush very well to give you that really nice blacked metal look. That is the base coats done for both guns and crews. I've glued the second side on the base now so I can concentrate on highlighting only those bits that are seen. When you've got hundreds of these to paint for a whole army, you don't want to spend time painstakingly highlighting something that you wouldn't be able to see once it's on the table. Now you can obviously base up those miniatures as they were, but I'm going to continue and carry on highlighting here. And this is Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm sorry, I forgot to film the part of me holding up the paint pot, but you get the idea. This is a very nice complement to the Blood Angels contrast red paint. And I'm just picking out some of the areas that would be highlighted, and it really just makes that red pop. For the more plain wood gun, I'm using model color orange brown to do the same job. So essentially highlighting areas to really make them stand out. So I'm going towards the top of the wheel on the spokes and things like that. And just a few lines on the main body of the gun. Now we're on to highlighting all these clothes. We've got model color flat earth and I've also got model color light brown. And those are the two colors I'm using to highlight the two different browns you'll see on most of these crew. So the darker brown, I'll use the flat earth, which you see me starting with. And then later on, I'll use the light brown on the more orangey tan kind of colors. For the blues, I'm using Jory Alden and Turquoise from Fantasy Game Scale Color range, and I'm also using Model Color Royal Blue for the slightly darker blue. I'm using Model Color Dark Sand for both the Skeleton Horde or Sepia areas and for the Agarax Dunes areas with the bags and things as well. The same color tends to work for both. It's the color underneath that will give the intensity or the different intensity between the darker tones and the light. So my favorite white, so model color off white as the highlight for all the, the lighter white areas. So over these uh, nice sort of grayish looking at the moment, uh, sleeves and cuffs and things. For the green, I'm using a 50-50 mix of off-white and then scale color fantasy games are and Jade. I couldn't find the right color to highlight the Express Color Green in my collection, so I had to mix one, but this was a fairly easy mix. I'm trying to be quite subtle with the highlights. Now you could leave the skin as it is, the pre-highlight does a pretty good job, but I like to go along and make them pop a little bit more. So I'm using model color basic skin. I'm just thinning it with some medium. I find basic skin a little bit chalky. Um, so sometimes it doesn't go on as smooth, but with that little bit of medium in, it makes it flow quite nicely. I'm just emphasizing the tops of the knuckles, the bridge of the nose, the cheekbones, and, and sometimes the forearms, and all the miniatures where they look a little bit dark. Then I often like to knock back those highlights just slightly using a glaze of Gilliam and Flesh, which is their lighter shade of flesh in their contrast range, much lighter than the Fire Slayer Flesh that we actually used to start with. Um, you don't have to do this. Um, I find it just takes away some of that brightness and, and gives a real nice tone. Again, you can just stick with the basic Fire Slayer Flesh if you want to as a start, or you can even use that as your glaze, maybe just add a little bit more water to it.
Now I want the metals to look blackened, but I'm going to use this black metal, which is a very subtle gun metal colour, and I'm just very lightly dry brushing it over the tops of the guns and over the metallic area. So we got the studs and the rim around the wheels. Make sure you remember to do any other metallic equipment as well. Now, because I don't want it to look too bright, I'm actually using contrast black templar. So remember, this is the lighter, less pigment, heavier the blacks. And just going in and gently painting in around some of the darker areas and adding that shape back in and slowly building it up. As I said, I really want the, the metal to look like a sort of black and iron rather than a nice shiny gun. But I didn't want to do a non-metallic paint scheme on this. I wanted to use normal metallics because it's a lot easier, a lot quicker and easier for, for, for most of you army painters to, to follow. And I think this does a nice enough effect with you building it up slowly afterwards. And now it's time for those finishing touches. So I'm using some Vallejo Earth texture. It's always my favorite for basing. Um, this one is Dark Earth. Once that's dry, I like to add some wash on it. So in this case, I'm using Agrax Earth Shade. I add a little bit of pigment. Again, once it's fully dry, I'm using Vallejo Pigments here, just Light Center, brushing it right in, allowing it to get into all the gaps and crevices and just blowing the excess away. It doesn't require a sealant. And because they're gun carriages, I wanted to add some mud effects. So this is thick mud, European mud from Vallejo. This is more of an effect than a basing texture. And I wanted to add a little bit around the way the wheels have churned up the earth. Then as always with this scale, I like to use two millimeter tufts, add a few of those around on the base. And finish by uh, rimming the bases in black. And there we are on that's your finished gun crew. So the first one on your screen there is the medium Seiker gun. Um, I really like that red, it really sort of stands out and it was fun being able to sort of randomly paint the crew whichever colours I like. I might have gone a little bit bright on the, the blues and the greens if I'm being super historically accurate. It probably should have been darker, but uh, at this scale it helps them stand out on the table for sure. And there's your like Falconet gun, um, the much smaller one. Looks a little bit lost in the middle of the base there, uh, so I've added some extra tufts around the edges. I think when I paint the rest of these for the army I might add some extra little bits and bobs to fill out those bases more. I could even get some smaller bases, but uh, that requires some extra faffing around. It's probably easier just to put the odd rock here or there, or, or some of the spare miniatures that will come on the, the, the uh, cavalry frame. Well, I hope you found the video useful. These were really fun to do. It's always nice just sort of painting one-off artillery pieces. Um, and these are some lovely little sculpts and some real character with the crew. Have fun when you get to do yours. Go to town on uh, choosing your own colours. Just remember they were mostly civilians and so you've got a little bit of flexibility of what colour you paint their clothes. Look over some more pike and shot epic battles, painting tutorials in the near future. I'll definitely be covering some more of the miniatures in the range, including a part three for infantry where I'll cover painting the new model army and probably a couple of other main common uniform colours or types to help those of you um, who wish to have a bit more guidance on how to do those. I also plan on doing a little bit on the video about how to have exchangeable flags for those of you who are going for more sort of generic colors as always if you've enjoyed the video please do give us a like it does help get the video seen by others and let me know that you like what i'm doing if you are new to the channel please do take the time to check out the other videos you may well find there's lots more you like if you've enjoyed this one there's lots of painting tutorials um, to do with epic battles ranges including the, the waterloo and the american civil war ranges there's some 15 millimeter world war ii with flames of war there's some bolt action there's some warhammer there's some middle earth strategy battle game so lots of things to suit lots of different tastes and if you like what you see please do consider subscribing anyway thank you very much for watching take care and i'll catch you soon